I've never seen anything like this. He has nine videos and nine million views. Put things in perspective, Greg Doucette is averaging 76,000 views per video for his last 10 videos. More plates, more dates, 95,000. Larry Wheels, 155,000. Jeff Cavalier, 570,000. So he's getting almost double the views per video as Jeff Cavalier. In this video, we're gonna look over these nine videos and try to find out what makes this shit so dank. And what sets him apart really is his editing. That is the biggest difference. I've never seen editing like this in YouTube fitness. This is better than most network TV. If you put this on the BBC, this would be an upgrade. Usually on YouTube, your first few videos are complete dog shit. Right. Hello everyone and welcome to the voiceover section. And sometimes they improve over time. All of his videos from the very first frame are absolutely on point. And this is something that you very rarely see. Usually the first few videos, they look very homemade and, and sometimes they stay that way. But usually there's a progression, right? In this case, it started out really, really good and it just kept getting better. Now, one thing that I've noticed is that often when a fitness influencer person has a video on supplements, they have an ulterior motive. Not always, but in many cases. They wanna get you to click on that affiliate link, they wanna sell you some product or something, and they have an inherent bias. I don't get that sense from him at all. He defers to the experts, 10 people who I also highly respect. Well, mostly. For example, pretty much all the experts agree that BCAAs are not really worth the investment, with the exception of Athlean X, because probably, well, maybe, possibly, perhaps, because he's selling BCAAs. I also like how he went into the placebo effect, which is very common with supplements. They don't actually do anything, but because you believe they have an effect, they have an effect. His next video, you don't need to follow that Instagram model. And I really like this video. It was one of the first ones that I saw from him, and it's true you don't need to follow that Instagram model. And I think a lot of people put these influencers up on a pedestal and they trust them blindly when the influencer does not have their best interest at heart or doesn't care about them whatsoever. Especially with the rise of TikTok, which we'll go into a little bit later, there is a lot of terrible advice floating around. A lot of it not only doesn't make sense, but it's actually actively dangerous. And you would be astonished at how many people criticize me and say very mean things about me when I'm just trying to point out bad information. If a fitness influencer says, you know, don't do compound movements, don't use progressive overload, or focus on your pituitary gland to try to get taller before you go to sleep at night, and I say, uh, by the way, this is some terrible advice, they don't want to hear it because they blindly trust this person that they have this parasocial relationship with. He also talked about the differences between Instagram and reality. Huge gap. A lot of people are spending so much time online that they get this just distorted vision of reality. The world is different from Instagram. That might seem like a very simple statement, but a lot of people don't actually understand that. And they're being led down the wrong path. Finally, you have this cult of personality and this lack of critical objective thinking that seems to spring up around a lot of bigger fitness accounts. Not every single one, but I would say the majority of big accounts do have this cult of personality. And it's very, very dangerous. His next video you might have already seen, We Need to Stop V-Shred. And this was actually the first video that I saw of his. Someone sent it to me and they said, Hey dude, you're in this video. I'm in this one. I'm in this one. Okay, here I come. I'll buy this program. If I could give it less than one star, I would. And I'm like, oh, cool. That's the coolest fucking story I've ever heard in my entire life. That's insane. Is it, can I hear it again? This video was, of course, excellent. Not because I was in it, duh. Just because of the editing as well as the message. Those two things are what make Josh Brett different. Editing and the messaging. And it talked a lot about fitness marketing. And this is something that isn't talked about very much because most people in a position of power to actually talk about it, it's not in their best interest to actually 
talk about it. There are a lot of ways to manipulate the consumer, and most big brands use most of these. Because if they don't, they are at a huge disadvantage. Not all companies are big giant bags of shit, but a lot are. Video number four: The Dark Side of Hollywood Body Transformations. Only knew the power of the dark side. Jeffrey Verity Schofield never told you about the benefits of steroids. He told me enough. He told me they shrink your dick. No. They only shrink your balls, making your dick look even bigger. No. That's not true. That's impossible. Search your feelings. You know it to be true. Now, Hollywood actors are in a weird position because Often, they have to take steroids to get the kind of physiques that really pop on screen. If you're a Marvel actor and you have to get in shape quickly, there's a good chance that you have to take steroids. It's just how it is. However, they're also illegal. Plus, even more than that, it looks bad. You think The Rock is going to say, Hey dudes, like this is my cycle, or this is what I use, or even just I take steroids. No. Oh, by the way, don't take, I take steroids out of context. That's going to be, I don't take steroids. <laughs> Fuck. I'm Ron Burgundy, and this is what's happening in your world tonight. Jeffrey Verity Schofield admits to being juiced. I take steroids. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> and they are in a tough position. You have to take steroids to get the kind of physique that looks good on screen so that the masses will actually go and see the movie. But then you can't tell the masses what you actually had to do to get that physique. So it's sort of a little bit of a conundrum, and I do feel for these Hollywood actors. On the other hand, at least hint at it, at least say like, hey, yeah, like I'm riding on my bicycle. I get, you know, maybe you have a contract and you can't say it outright, but don't fucking lie about it. That is what actually pisses me off. I think especially for teenagers or younger people, it does mess with your view of reality. You have your hero saying this transformation was natural, was just hard work, just the chicken breast, broccoli and rice, which is now a meme at this point and deservedly so, and yet it's not actually naturally achievable. And this sets you up for failure. Video number five, Bang Energy, the fitness meme. Again, this video went into the very, very sketchy and at times really actually awkward marketing that they partake in, as well as the very dubious scientific claims. And this shows you the kind of bullshit that you can get away with in this industry. Just hire some good looking models, put the product there, and young people will eat it up. Or, or drink it down, in this case. And realistically, if you have a pre-workout, you can underdose every single ingredient, with the exception of caffeine, and it will still be somewhat effective. And because people are so engrossed and influenced by this marketing, especially if it's from someone they trust. But as you can see here, almost everything is dosed at a tiny fraction of the very lowest end. I mean, no one would accept that argument if we were talking about a pre-workout formula. So there's no reason why that applies here either. They will still buy this product, which is sad to see, but it happens every day in the fitness industry. I'm not saying you can't make it in the fitness industry without being a giant piece of shit. It's just that the giant pieces of shit have a huge advantage. Video number six, the problem with Gymshark. Now, what I like most about this video is that it was very fair. It didn't just talk about the bad. It didn't just talk about the good. It talked about the founder's struggles when starting the company, but then later how their influencer marketing turned out to cause some problems. And he also touched on the problem of fake naturals. A clothing company sponsoring fake naturals to push clothing is something that is very, very morally dubious and just downright sketchy, in my opinion. And if you're natural, it's pretty much impossible at this point to develop a standout physique. You can look good, you can be healthy, but you'll never have that wow factor. You're never going to get a million followers or subscribers only based on your physique. And yet, if you take steroids, especially if you're a fake natural and people want to relate to you, you absolutely can get hundreds of thousands, if not millions of followers, just based on how you look. 
And thus you get these guys who a lot of people look up to and they use that influence to influence people and to push supplements, clothing, usually shitty workout plans, basically anything that they can sell. Video number seven, why this teenager is stronger than you. Now, I was actually pretty surprised to see this video because it was a little bit different than his previous content. His previous stuff is, you know, calling out bullshit or talking about the dangers of influencers and the fitness industry as a whole. It wasn't really talking about working out itself or biomechanics or strength or hypertrophy training. It was more on the cultural side of fitness. And I was actually very, very impressed by how much detail he went into. It wasn't just like, ah, oh, leverages and genetics. No, he actually went into the physiology behind why some people are way stronger than they would appear. And I think this is a really, really important thing to talk about because especially, again, with social media, a lot of people have these very weird expectations. They think, you know, oh, my favorite fitness influencer benches three plates within a year, even though they're on SARMs and steroids and other stuff. Therefore, this is a normal expectation. It is not. Video number eight, being healthy ruined my life. Now, this is a little bit more of a personal story. And he talked about his own journey starting around 48 kilos and how he wanted to gain muscle and, you know, how social media gave him very strange expectations. And finally, how he managed to come to terms with his own physique and what are reasonable expectations. And I could relate to this video quite a bit, and I know a lot of younger men can as well. Muscle isn't as important as you think. If you're a young man, you are probably putting muscle on too high of a pedestal. It is not that important. Your muscle does not define you. And guess what? Women don't even care that much about muscle. They really don't. It's often true that the more fitness content you consume the worse you feel. You feel worse. You feel like you are eating crap when you actually had a healthy diet, and so you cut everything out of your diet. You feel like you're a lot weaker than you actually are. Uh, you feel just inadequate. You can never live up to the expectations of social media. And it's very easy to develop disorders if you overconsume fitness content. You develop eating disorders. Disorders? Eating disorders uh, like orthorexia, where you're only eating healthy food, Anorexia, bulimia are very common in women. A lot of fitness influencers, they don't eat a lot of food, especially on the female side. For men, bigorexia, the feeling like you're never big enough. That's why a lot of people end up taking steroids because they're not satisfied with their progress. They don't actually feel comfortable in their own skin because they've seen too many roided up people on social media. They feel inadequate even though they have a very solid physique. I've seen this time and time again. Someone sends me a picture and I say, hey, you look great. They're like, no, no, I look, I look like shit. Like, no, you look perfectly healthy and you have a very solid physique and they don't want to believe it. I've had people who said that they're 20% body fat. They send me a picture and they're pretty damn shredded. They're closer to 10 or 11% body fat. They have just a very weird image of their own body. Body dysmorphia. Orthorexia is way more common than people think. If I go out and I eat, you know, a pizza or something like that, people are shocked. If I have a drink, people are astonished. If I have anything other than just this tiny set of foods that people expect fitness influencers to eat, they are just blown away. If I post something on my Instagram that is not green plus meat plus rice, people are absolutely shocked. In his final video so far, the dangers of TikTok fitness. Now, I am not on TikTok, and I'm not on TikTok for a very specific reason. My kind of content will never, ever do well on there. It just won't. And more than any other platform, TikTok is upside down. The good content doesn't do well typically speaking. The shit content does astonishingly well. And you do see some people who have literally millions and millions of followers and they don't know anything. I can tell they don't know anything. They put out these, these bullshit exercises that make zero sense, biomechanically speaking, a lot of pushing of shitty supplements and just bad advice in general. The platform is pretty much built 
for misinformation. And Josh is 100% correct that you should not consume all of your fitness content in short form, little bite-sized chunks, simply because you can't go into very much depth in that short amount of time. Understand, and to really understand a lot of topics, that can't be done in 15 seconds or 30 seconds or even a minute. It might feel good, it might keep you on that dopamine drip, but to actually advance, to actually progress, to actually gain a depth of knowledge that is necessary, you do need more time. You need 10 minute videos, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, even longer, or better yet, reading. I know it sounds kind of archaic, a little bit old fashioned, but actually reading is the best way to consume information. Finally, he talked about the issue where you're not actually selecting your content. On most platforms, you can choose. You click on what you want to watch, which has some other problems, but at least you are in control. On TikTok, what gets shown next is not under your control. The platform shows you what they want you to see. And that is very dangerous because the more misinformation that you consume, the more likely more misinformation will be shown to you in the future. And it's very easy to get this completely false view of reality. So definitely subscribe to Josh's channel. I can tell an insane amount of hard work goes into each and every video. I might spend five or 10 hours on one video. For him, it must be at least 20, 30, maybe even 40 or 50 hours. This kind of content takes a lot of time, energy, and effort. Luckily, it's absolutely paying off, and it is definitely inspiring and awesome to see his channel grow, and I fully expect it to continue growing in the future. All right, that's all for this video. Subscribe, like, share, notifications, all the good stuff, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.